Right, we are back. As promised on my community tab, we are going to make some angel wings. Hopefully, I can do it again. <laughs> we are going to be doing this with UV resin, but, but there is a big but. This can be done with epoxy. If you follow hashtag 94, I do believe, it's exactly the same process. We're just stirring the pigments in a very different way. And for the white, we are using some of the white liquid dye from the Resin Rockers genre series. We only need the white, but you can do this with other colours. I've done this with the neon powders and I'll show you the results at the end of the video. And the key is balance. The balance of the ingredients that you're mixing into your epoxy or UV resin are really going to make a difference to how these come out. Obviously, the more ingredients you add, the more potential it has to sink. So bear that in mind. Little is best to begin with. So I'm just going to put one drop. It's a really thick white pigment, this. A little does go a really long way. You could do this with pigment paste if you've got some. Again, less is best. I've only got two, about two mil in this cup and one drop of that white should do it. If not, I may have to add more resin. Then we're just gonna let that sit for a good five minutes just for any bubbles to, to rise. You don't want to use any heat near this effect because what that can do is when you introduce the drops to the resin, even with this, don't apply any heat to pop any bubbles. What will happen is when you drop it in, it's just gonna spread. So whilst I'm waiting for the, the white to degas, I'm gonna pour this so they both degas at the same time. And I'm not filling this right up, I'm gonna leave about a millimeter from the top. What I'm going to have to do is remove my white silicon mat so you can see the white drops as I'm adding them. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to see. Now, what's going to happen as you're adding your drops? Same as epoxy, it's going to start to pull inwards. It's not a problem. But when you do this, you want to work in symmetry. So... What I mean by that is add your drops to the left, then to the right. Because if I was to add all of my drops over the left hand side first, by the time I get to the right, they would have moved. So you need to work in symmetry. All I'm doing is applying drops around the outer edge of the cavity of the mold. Then I can move inwards and I'm leaving like a channel down the middle. You can already see those pigments pulling in. So I can add a few more drops in there. Depends how many kind of feathers you really want, but try and keep it symmetrical. As always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. Messed up there a little bit. <laughs> so the, the key to this is the, the manipulation of the negative space around this. So I'm gonna use my toothpick cocktail stick and just sweep down the side again. You want to work in symmetry. So I'll now move over to the other side and do the same thing. You can see it forming again over this side and again over the other side. You might not get the perfect balance. You can see this one here. I can just pull that out a little bit to get it. And now we just cure it. So I'm gonna give that two minutes under my lamp. I had to quickly slide my mirror 
underneath because I forgot, I keep forgetting. <laughs> so you have two options. You either finish this off as it is, you can kind of brush it with a colored powder and back it with a black or white, whatever you want. There's lots of different ways that you could do this. Or you could go in with a secondary layer of feathers to make it more 3D. If you do that, you need to let this cool down completely. Because again, if you pour fresh resin over the back of this, where it's just cured, it's going to be warm. And the second you introduce those new drops, it is going to just blur out everywhere. You also have the risk where we've cured that first layer, because UV resin shrinks inside molds, you can have, you possibly have a gap around the edge. And if you pour another layer in, the fresh resin is going to seep down that gap and it's going to create more work afterwards, sanding it down and finishing it off. Um, so you, but you can take it out and rest it on something as long as it's level, then work on the second layer. I would definitely suggest though just sticking with the one layer to begin with until you've mastered it because things can move around. You might not get the balance perfect. What you can also do is if you find it's going off center slightly before curing, take your stick and just run it down the middle slowly and that can rebalance both sides. You can see as it's cooling down it's starting to pull away from the mold. I just heard it. And that's the first time I've ever heard that before. I was just sitting here thinking about what am I going to do? Am I going to just finish it off or am I going to be brave and go in? But as I was sitting there thinking, I could hear the mold pulling away from the resin. What I'm going to do is just pour some of this white out into a separate pot and then make a grey by using just a, a tiny amount of black mica powder. Actually, I've got some black mica already mixed in with some UV resin, so I can use that just to tint it. And this should, what I'm going to do is give it a little bit of a smoky effect behind those wings. Now that's cooled down, I can apply a very thin coat of clear Again, make sure it's level. You don't want it dripping over the sides. Just make sure it's all the way to the edges. I really don't know how this is gonna turn out. This is only the second time doing it. Just gonna apply some of those gray dots. Again, in symmetry. All over the back. This will give it a nice 3D effect hopefully my first attempt that you've seen the picture of on the community tab kind of went wrong I had to mix the gray in with the clear <laughs> and try and keep it just over the wing areas which was really difficult bring some more up here I'm winging this guys <laughs> Um, that will do. Okay, some of it is blurring out. I think I'm just going to have to really wing this. That will do. I'm going to cure it as it is. Once that is cured, I'm going to dust mine with gold. Most of you have got this already. It's just from a, a set on Amazon, lots of different nail powders, and that is the gold that I'm using. Just gonna dust the whole back, fully cover it. Then I can just cover that gold with a black and give it a final cure. Now, this thing is brilliant. Fran at Little Windows, when we were first discussing working together, she said to me, oh, would you be interested in one of our spring drills? And I said, no, 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 no. I'm setting my ways. I prefer using my, my little handheld thing. I know lots of you use electric ones. I've got one, um, but I do prefer drilling by hand for some reason. 
This thing is absolutely incredible. It comes with some spare bits and it's it's a game changer for me and I hate that word. I can't believe I just used it. You just place it on the back where you need to drill. Get it central. Always drill from the back guys, don't drill from the front because it can slide and, and scratch. And you just push it up and down. I've been using this every day. And it's it's not just a sales pitch. It's not just me saying go and buy this because I get a commission out of it. I mean, I couldn't care less if you bought it or not. <laughs> it's not all about the money for me. Sometimes something comes along and I just get, you know, I'm like, wow, that is incredible. I did not realize how easy this thing would be. Sorry, my focus is going. Let's lock it. Yeah, it's that simple, just up and down until you get through. Really, really quick and easy. Much, much better than my usual hand drill. I hope I've got the wrong size on, the right size on here now because I did change it the other day, but I think I'll put it back on. And just like that, we're through. There we go, we're through. And just twist it out. Genius. As always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. It is free. And I, I really need to thank everybody for the the really kind words in the community tab. We just hit 90,000 followers, subs. Um, I haven't had time to reply to each and every one of you, but it really does mean a lot. Thank you very, very much. So, I like I said, I did some of the nail powders. This one's like a parrot. It went off centre, but it's I did I, I didn't finish it, but it is doable. And those were the neon nail powders that you've seen me use before, and I've used them recently actually to make some inks, haven't I? And this one was swiping upwards instead of down, and this is the one that got me thinking to try this in the first place. Absolutely incredible. Again, it is about the balance. Not too much powders or not too much pigment. This is the one that you've seen on the community tab page. You can see that smokiness through the in the background where I just had to stir the the grey in. It really is a stunning angel wing effect. This is the one that we have just done. Really is nice. Again, do whatever colour combos you want. Really is down to you. This was one with the nail powders also. It looks more like a, again, like parrot wings. But these for me, they just do it. They're really, really good. Right, I hope you enjoyed that one. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.